Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and thank you so much, panelists, for your moving testimony. My home state of Oregon is one of the few states that actually requires universal background checks for all firearm sales. However, the recent shooting at the Clackamas Town Center shopping mall, the shooter killed two before turning the gun on himself. He had stolen his assault rifle. And as we know, the Newtown shooter used weapons that were owned by his mother. So background checks, universal background checks are important, but what other steps can we take? How else can we address the situations that are not addressed by universal background checks? Thank you. In Connecticut, the person took his mother's weapons. One of the proposals out of what I released yesterday in Philadelphia, the Sandy Hook Principles. You walk into, I don't want to give anyone free advertising, you walk into a video store or an electronic store, you buy a DVD player, they immediately offer you the two-year warranty. When you walk into a gun store, after the background check, which everyone should go through, they should also offer you a gun lock. Or ask, do you have a gun locker in your house or your business where this gun is going to be stored? And that should be a part of the sale. And that's the only person who should be able to get access to that weapon. We know that the technology exists that you can, in fact, make guns in such a way that only the legitimate owner and operator can operate that weapon. That would cut down tremendously on the fact that in my city and many other cities across the United States of America, you can rent guns in stash houses across the city. You walk in, they show you an array of weapons, you pick out the one you want, you put your money down, bring it back in a week, you do whatever it is that you do, and you bring it back. Mostly you bring it back because they know who you are. So guns circulate. They're already there. There's not, at least in our city, I know in Chicago, in Illinois, may have very, very tough laws. We don't in Pennsylvania. We have some of the weakest laws in the United States of America. And so in places where you have tough laws, I mean, they may be crazy, but they're not totally stupid. They go across the county line, buy whatever weapons they buy in a weaker law state, and bring them back and engage in their activity, which is why we need federal legislation covering the entire United States of America. That's what we need. And straw purchasers, I mean, the people involved in that particular business who, and in many instances, it could be a spouse, it could be a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever the case may be. The person knows that they can't buy weapons themselves. They go have a friend go do it. That person is engaged in criminal activity as far as I'm concerned. They should have the hammer come down on them as well. And lastly, you need minimum sentences for people who walk around with unlicensed weapons. If you look to New York and commend Governor Cuomo for what he did yesterday, but in New York City, a very famous athlete a few years ago, walking around with his own weapon, unlicensed, shot himself in the leg and did two years in prison. This is serious business. We have too many young people, too many teens with too great of access to these weapons, and no one seems to care whether or not they have them or not. Those are illegal guns that should not be on our streets, and we need to step up in law enforcement activity and snatch those illegal guns off the streets of America. All of this conversation, and I had one last night with someone who clearly needs a serious background check herself, this notion that somehow, after 236 years created in the city of Philadelphia, that somehow the government is going to do something that causes everyone to be armed, that we're marching down the street, coming after guns, is a whole lot of nonsense. And people who are not dealing in the reality of what I and the chief and many others face on a daily basis. We have real jobs with real challenges and real responsibilities trying to make our folks safe. We need to cut out the nonsense and have serious conversation about these issues.